Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to another MSI Insider live stream. Well, not just MSI Insider today, but also some AMD. Welcome, welcome, Martijn. Thank you very much, Michiel. It's glad to be here. Always good to have you here. Thank um, you. I know our regular viewers will probably be familiar with Martijn, um, in case you're not. Uh, Martijn, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, hardware enthusiast for many, many years, uh, obviously working in this industry also for many years, and now um, very happy to be, uh, be part of the AMD team for uh, a couple of years, um, focusing on the, the Ryzen CPU side and the Radeon GPU side as well. And we actually have some nice stuff for both of them today. I see a very big box. <laughs> this one? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid to topple it over the table, so I'm going <laughs> to hold yeah. it right now. Be careful, okay. be careful. Yeah. But before we start, um, we have a giveaway today in which you can win one of the Steam wallet codes. So if you go to msi.com slash two slash insider, or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow uh, the direct link that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. There you can participate. Um, the more actions you perform in Gleam, the bigger chance you'll have to win. And if you're a returning visitor, also make sure to claim your loyalty bonus. Um, so throughout the stream, we'll do several drawings. Um, when you're signed up, no need to do anything again for the uh, following drawings. What, what can they win again, Michiel? Steam Wallet Steam vouchers. Wallet goes. Oh, nice. Yes. Especially and with the new games coming out. So. Indeed. They can actually also use this on the game that, well, part of this live stream is based on, Starfield. Absolutely. And you guys actually have a very nice promotion with this, right? Absolutely. So with select uh, Ryzen processors and Radeon graphics cards, um, in depending on the region and obviously the uh, retailer or e-tailer where you buy this from, you can get a free copy now for a limited amount of time uh, of Starfield, the new, you know, very, very popular game that a lot of people have been uh, been eyeing and, and waiting on um, to start playing. And so uh, very excited that that has come out um, this week out of uh, early access. So. Um, uh, together with obviously uh, new graphics cards launching, uh, great uh, Ryzen CPUs that we have, um, so yeah, we uh, we are very very excited to be uh, be a partner with Bethesda, making this possible and uh, playing well on AMD Ryzen and AMD Radeon, uh, as well as uh, being able to um, you know give away a few game codes right with the uh, purchase of these uh, GPUs and CPUs. So. And this one is valid on quite a lot of products, right? I believe also 5000 series and 7000 series in Ryzen. Absolutely. And so, 6 yeah. and 7 in, in Radeon. Yeah, you're right, Michiel. Um, a few models, uh, depending on which model you buy uh, from the CPU side or the GPU side, come with either the premium edition of Starfield and other ones come with the standard edition. Uh, but I'd recommend you to check out AMD.com. Uh, there's a Starfield landing page on there, and you'll find eligible products as well as regions and e-tailers who are participating. So, talking about uh, Ryzen and Radeon, <laughs> there is a nice big box in front of you. It's this one. I, I hope you <laughs> yes. can see it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite big, actually. It's a, a limited edition. And, um, you know, in honor and to celebrate our partnership with Starfield um, and your idea, obviously, to, um, to do an all-white build, we thought this was a great moment to um, utilize, uh, let's say, the limited edition that we've designed uh, with the Starfield uh, Special Edition Radeon RX uh, 7900 XTX graphics card. So I'll just unbox this real quick. If you can see it, um, and I'll hold it into the main camera as well. Um, but yeah, we have a very special limited edition graphics card as well as a CPU inside uh, in this bundle. Um, and we'll be using this to build an all-white build today, especially for Starfield, and to show you what kind of performance it can deliver uh, when pairing uh, an RX 7900 XTX with a Ryzen um, 7 7800 X3D uh, CPU. So uh, a while ago, a couple of months ago already, when you, of course, launched the 7000 series X3D, um, at launch we already talked about and demonstrated the Ryzen 9. We touched a little bit on the Ryzen 7, but we never had it in stream before. Mm -hmm. um, but today we will be building with this AMD Ryzen 7 7800 X3D. And this is an interesting CPU for gamers, isn't it? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I would say one of the best uh, gaming CPUs, especially if you look at price performance, if you look at, you know, 8 core, 16 threads, um, high clock frequencies up to 5 gigahertz, um, a lot of L3 cache, obviously, that makes these uh, CPUs special. So the 3DV cache, um, allowing for, um, let's say, less CPU bottleneck and higher frame rates. Uh, and as you'll see, especially with most uh, reviewers out there, uh, it has become one of the favorite CPUs to test new games on, for example, as well. And um, yeah, we're super excited to uh, to be able to show today the performance of this CPU together with the uh, Radeon RX 7900 XDX uh, and what we can do to uh, to really take Starfield to the next level. And um, 
enjoy it at its um, full glory, right? Yeah, and X3D, I think, is very interesting because if you, for example, compare this to a 7700X, uh, which is also an 8-core CPU, you see specifically in games they benefit so much from that 3D V cache. Exactly. Um, but also when you compare it to the previous generation, like the 5800X3D, it's quite a speed bump, isn't it? Yeah, depending on the title, obviously, and it, this could be you know, less uh, CPU bottleneck titles to more CPU bottleneck titles, you can see up to 30% performance increase, and that's a lot just from a CPU alone. And like especially uh, we see a couple of, of eSports titles here, and they benefit quite a lot from this. Of course, very CPU-intensive titles, and then... Yeah. Yeah, this is where 3D Vcast really helps generate more frames, right? And um, moving from Zen 3 to Zen 4 also obviously helps a lot um, in the new AM5 platform with DDR5 memory. Um, and you know support for the latest uh, NVMe drives and so on. So overall, you know, getting a great uplift just from uh, making a CPU upgrade is something to be very excited about. Yeah, let's uh, take a look at all the, the other components we'll be building with today. Okay, which one do you want me to show? Yeah, maybe let's uh, let's have a more detailed look at the graphics card <laughs> because this is uh, not a regular version. No, this is a very special limited edition and super gorgeous looking. RX uh, 7900 XTX, as I mentioned, Starfield Edition. Um, and I can show you real quick. Let me see if I can remove these so you can actually, I'll leave this on for now. Um, closer to the camera, you can see how gorgeous this looks. Um, very, you know, cool design and fully themed into the, to the whole Starfield theme, obviously. And um, yeah, very proud of our partnership, as we mentioned, with Bethesda on this game. I mean, this is going to be a game that's going to be played for many, many years, we anticipate. So, yeah, to celebrate that, we've um, the team went wild and created this gorgeous-looking graphics card. So we'll be using that in our build, obviously, today, especially as it, you know, it's Starfield-themed and it's uh, an all-white build. I couldn't think of a better graphics card to put in there. Yeah, looks good. And, of course, it is already in kind of white tints, so we got some nice um, white components to, uh, to use this with. Um, maybe you can hold up the power supply. The power supply. Oop, there's a lot of cables here, so yes. you've got to be careful. So they are plugged in. It is a fully modular power <laughs> supply, but currently there are some, some cables plugged in already. Well, you asked me to start building a PC today, and I kind of cheated my way into doing already a bit of a head start with cable management and <laughs> so stuff. So we can finish so in time today. <laughs> yeah, so we finish in time, actually. So this is the uh, MAG A850 GL PCIe 5. Um, actually, a while ago, we already had a live stream about this. So if you want to have more details about this new power supply, make sure to check this out. I believe it was end of June. So you can still find this uh, on our YouTube channel, of course, to watch back. Um, these power supplies, um, I think, are very interesting. We already talked about black models. But this now we also introduced the white model. Um, this 850 watt uh, will be plenty of power for this, for this specific build. Uh, also comes with the new PCIe 5 connector. It's 80 plus gold rated. Um, so all in all, very nice combination for this build. Um, then we also have our new liquid cooler. Yep, I got it here as well. And this that. is the MAG Core Liquid E360 White. And actually about these liquid coolers, we also recently had a live stream. So also make sure to check that one out if you want to have more details about these liquid coolers. Excuse um, the cable management. <laughs> <laughs> in the live stream, uh, we showed you the black model, the E240. Uh, today, we're using the bigger brother, the E360, in the white color, of course, to match it nicely with the system. Um, very nice CPU cooler, I think, uh, with some nice RGB lighting to go with it. And personally, I always think RGB looks just a little bit cooler on white because you get that reflective thing. So it looks more intense. So if you're into RGB, I think white builds are definitely worth considering. Um, so also about this, we did a dedicated live stream. So if you want to know more about these specific liquid coolers, uh, how they perform, what kind of features they have, make sure to check that out as well. So we'll go ahead and test them out today. So yes, you already definitely. get some uh, performance preview. And this like a 360 millimeter radiator on because a 7800 X3D is a pretty power efficient CPU. So Absolutely. this is plenty of power. It's maybe even a little bit overkill. Uh, but on the other hand, then you can run a bit lower fan profile and make your system more slight if you well, want You to. know why I have to say this. You can never have enough cooling capacity. That's true. That's so. true. And it looks pretty with all the RGB fans. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, oh, that's the wrong one. No signal yet. Of course not, because we still have to build this PC. So <laughs> let me go to the, to the correct one. <laughs> there we go. Um, maybe you could show the memory modules. 
the Unfortunately, memory. we didn't have any white or silver ones on hand, um, but we have some very nice uh, modules with RGB, so you can always set those to white. Next time, we um, just spray paint them white. Yeah, the G-Scales are also available in silver. Those would, of course, be even fancier with this build. And this um, is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 uh, 6000 CL30 memory. It's also uh, AMD Expo compatible. Yep. Um, so just one simple mouse click, and it runs on uh, DDR5 6000 CL30. Also yep. a very nice combination with the 7800X3D. Uh, yeah, actually, it has pretty tight timings as well. So, yeah. 30, 38, 38. So, that's pretty good for so a 6,000 kit. Yeah, there's, they're very high end modules. Of course, they are a bit more expensive than, for example, uh, CL36 uh, at that speed. Um, but the performance in combination with that 7800X3D is, is really good. Um, I'll then, move some stuff. maybe let's take a look at the SSD. The SSD. All right. And that's this is. The MSI Spatium M480, and this is the two terabyte model. It is Flat. not white, but we will hide it underneath a nice silver heatsink of the motherboard. Talking yeah. about that motherboard, that one is still in the box. Time uh, for some. It's still in the box. The MAG B650 Edge Wi-Fi motherboard, and this is of course a perfect fit with the other components that we're using today. There you go. So it's a B650 um, motherboard. Um, of course, comes in with socket, a socket AM5. Um, I compatible with applied. all the Ryzen 7000 series. Yeah, a lot of I/O. Also Damn. supports Wi-Fi 6E. And built-in I/O shield, which is convenient for many PC builders, right? So. Yeah, definitely saves some time. You cannot lose the, the separate shield anymore. Yeah. And by the way, don't worry. This is an anti-static uh, mat, so. For people in the chat worrying about the hardware. And uh, they're used to Eric. He's good at destroying <laughs> hardware anyway. <so. laughs> I see Skeet Sarah is responding in the chat. I love my 7900X3D. Also a very nice CPU. Cool. Um, so the Ryzen 9s, of course, a bit more focused at productivity with all those cores. Um, but with the X3D, also very good at gaming. Today, we're really focusing at a gaming system. Um, so that's why we're going for the Ryzen 7. But yeah, in case you want to do gaming and productivity, Ryzen 9 is a, it's a very good alternative, I would say. Yeah, 12 cores just to give you a little bit more headroom yeah. when you're streaming or doing content creation on the side or having Discord and any other applications running in the background. Just a couple of more cores may be convenient, right? So. Yeah. Um, and then we have our very last component. Yeah, make some space because this <laughs> one is a bit bigger. And this is also one we haven't talked about on the live stream before. So completely new product, and we hope you'll like it. World exclusive. Yes. All right. Uh, lift it. There we go. And this is the new MPG Gangnir 300R Airflow. And then the white version also comes in a black version. Um, and we have a third version. So let me quickly show you the different versions that we have. Um, the MPG Gangnir uh, 300 series, we come with three different models. Here you see the one on the right, MPG Gangnir 300R Airflow white. Comes in black as well. And then it's the 300P. Um, that one doesn't have the RGB fans, for example, but it's really focused at even better cooling performance with some additional uh, fans, also um, uh, vertical GPU mount by default, for example. Um, so these are our new uh, cases, um, and we're already going to build in it today. Uh, of course, with the white model, if we're going to do a Starfield build with these components, um, I believe this is the perfect fit. Um, Looks good. Yeah, and uh, I hope you also like it during the building process. It has some, some nice features that we'll go through while you're building as well. Um, okay. But, but let's maybe uh, first look into the to compatibility, if we can use all the components that we're planning on using. So this case supports um, uh, ATX motherboards, micro ATX motherboards, mini ATX motherboards, also extended ATX uh, motherboards up to a width of 280 millimeters. Um, so it can fit quite large motherboards in there. So even an ACE motherboard, for example, would fit. Um, it can fit CPU cores up to 175 millimeters in height. Um, of course, today we're going to use an all-in-one liquid cooler, so you don't need all that height. But in case you want to use uh, an air cooler, for example, uh, you do want quite a lot of space, so you can also fit larger air coolers in it. Um, <coughs> GPU length up to 360 millimeters should be plenty, right, with today's GPU? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll uh, definitely be fine. And uh, you can also fit power supplies uh, over 220 millimeters of length. Um, nowadays, actually, you see that even the, the higher end power supplies, they get a little bit more compact. 
So also our MEG power supplies, for example, they can go all the way up to 1300 watts, but are still relatively compact. Um, but of course, in case you have an older power supply and those tend to be a little bit longer, you can still use that in combination with this case. I think somebody in chat says he wants that motherboard or she on AM5, but just as a reminder, this is an this AM5 This is motherboard. very much AM5 indeed. So, yeah, exactly. So you can get this on AM5. It's the MPG B650 Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. Yeah, we'll be using this to um, power our Starfield build or all yep. white theme build today and um, looking forward to seeing how it performs, uh, Michiel. Yeah, let's uh, get into building then. All right. Well, cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what I usually do when I start building, obviously, is first take the motherboard, um, make sure that you have plenty of space, uh, remove any liquid. So I've got a, a can of Coke over here, so you don't want to be able to, you know, get that close to your hardware, and just start building, um, align everything that you need. So got my little screwdriver here, my Phillips. I've got my can of Coke here. You've got your can of Coke there. <laughs> Cheers. That's good. Enjoy it. Um, so usually I build outside the chassis and just pre-configure it, basically putting in the CPU, memory, and the NVMe drive because of um, being... It's just a lot more convenient, right? It's you so easy to work with. You have all space in the world. Yeah. Yeah, you simply mount it and then um, you basically put the whole thing together at once. I mean, it depends on, on your building style, but I find this uh, a very convenient way of building PCs. Oh, yeah. One uh, quick tip is don't forget the film on the M.2 um, on the heat whoop, thermal pads here. Yeah. So this is a dual-sided M.2 shield frother. That means that yeah. it has cooling pads on both sides of the SSD. Uh, that also means that you need to remove the films from both sides. Both sides, and yeah. then it has heat dissipation capacity, yeah. which is what you want. And, and it's also actually a dual-sided SSD that we're using today because we're using the two terabyte model, and that one also has um, chips on the back of the sure. PCB. Oh. Yeah, you can't see it because there are stickers on it. Yeah, but, there are stickers uh, I can on feel it. the chips being here. So yeah. yeah just, for example, uh, for the one terabyte model, the chips are all on the top of the SSD, but for the two terabyte models, you have them on both sides. So then you will, of course, benefit more from also having dual-sided cooler like with M.2 Shield Frozen. Yeah, simply slot in. The SSD. Uh, Torque Alpha is asking, any solution for the Windows update um, that MSI motherboards had a problem with? Yes, we actually rolled out new BIOSes for this. So make sure to check this out. We also send out a press release for this and um, check out on our website the latest BIOS version for your specific motherboard um, because last week we did roll out a BIOS update to address this issue. Uh, Vectom74 is asking, how many terabytes does it have? Uh, this one has two terabyte and the two SSD. Yeah, don't uh, over tighten the screws. Make sure it's uh, nice and steady, but don't uh, put all your effort into it. I mean... Carney Liu is asking, can I get a limited Starfield Radeon graphics card? I'm not sure if this is for sale as well. No, it's a very limited edition just to celebrate um, the, the partnership that we have with Bethesda. So, um, yeah, unfortunately not. But it's um, very, very cool as a show-off product, obviously, yeah. and uh, we'll be happy to uh, to start building and you know complementing the entire system using this special edition card, obviously. Um, all right, so the SSD is in, um, thermal pads. We've removed the film, protect the film. Um, now let's um, either put in the CPU or the memory. I kind of feel like you know it's easier to do the CPU first. Um, just before I do that, let me unbox the CPU because it's brand new in the box. Just be careful what you use to unbox, but here you can see the CPU. There's some warranty material in there, and as you can see, even the inside of the box is designed in Starfield fashion, right? All the coloring and... Everything just, matches. <laughs> yeah, it's really matching, which is really cool, and then here you can have some more Starfield uh, design in there as well. So it's very hard, obviously, to make a CPU as a special edition on now, the look I and feel. Now, but I see this one is silver, so that's a perfect match. It's, it's silver, <laughs> but, um, you know, making a white CPU is obviously going to be different because there's going to be thermal paste on it, there's going to be a cooler on top, so, yeah, it's, um, oh, yeah, and for those, so, um, not sure if you want me to explain, uh, Michiel, about um, building your first system, should we give some tips as well and I think how maybe to build. some people are still used to uh, AM4 and your okay. AM5 socket is quite different from that. 
Correct. So AM5 is back to LGA, um, so that means uh, the pins are in the socket rather than on the CPU as previous generation, um, which means uh, handle with care, um, be sure to keep the socket cover on as long as possible before you put in the CPU and just remove it when the CPU is inside. Um, there's a little um, triangle here which you align basically with the same triangle in the socket. Um, also be sure not to drop the CPU when you obviously work um, with horizontal and then inserting the CPU from the top. If you drop the CPU in the socket you may risk bending the pins. Simply pull down the lever and then the socket cover will pop off and that's basically what you want and now you have fully protected pins, CPUs inside, make sure that the lever is um, securely attached and then basically you can keep this in your motherboard box or wherever you want to swap CPUs that you make sure that you cover up the, the socket again. Yeah that's and also don't try to pull off the socket while the CPU is still not installed because as you can see it it kind of pops off and if it falls inside your CPU socket you may damage the pins. Yeah. So like uh, Martijn already mentioned always put in your CPU first because that, that way you also protect the socket and then if you just push it down it will pop off like you just saw what yeah, behind it. Absolutely and um, you know with most motherboards um, tip and trick is very easy to uh, remember is work on the outside in when you talk about memory and putting it in a dual channel configuration. Uh, you're taking the um, first slot on the outside, you skip one slot and then you go in the third slot basically from the outside. Um, that's uh, how you set up um, dual channel memory and make sure that it's working uh, as intended um, without any issues. Because if, if you use the other slots, oh, took it the other way around, if you use the other slots then you may, uh, may run into issues where it's unstable or it's running single channel, for example. So, yeah, so if be you sure to check the motherboard manual as well when you do this. If you put them right next to each other, indeed, they will run in, in single channel. And also because the memory topology of this board is daisy chaining, that means that two, two of the slots will have better signal quality than two other slots. Yep. If you have T topology, then the signal quality is around equal on all slots, but the total um, frequencies that you can reach are quite a bit lower. And because most people use um, two memory dims, we decided to go for daisy chaining memory topology. Um, <coughs> but that does mean that it, it matters in which slot you use it. So like uh, Martijn already mentioned, start on the outside, um, seen from the CPU of course, fill that one, skip one, fill the next one. If you're using four modules, of course, then it's easier, just fill all of them. Uh, another little tip is when you deal with glass panels, be very careful where you put them down and also the way that you remove them. Don't bend them too much because, you know, even though they're um, strengthened, they may still crack or break, which is obviously something you don't want, so be very careful with these panels. I always put them on the side just to make sure that, um, you know, they don't fall over or tip over anywhere. And this case actually has uh, special push latches. That means it's, it's very easy just to, to hang it oh. in there and click it in. Um, you do have an additional thumb screw to, to firmly screw it in, um, mostly for security reasons, if you want to do transport and stuff. Yep. Um, but you could actually use this toolless as well if you want to. So you just hang it in there, you click it. Um, and that's also why um, Matain could remove it so easily. Yeah, that's very convenient actually. And um, another thing I wanted to talk about is also removing the other panel so you can have easy access to your cable management when you want to you know, put in all the cables and stuff. And, uh, looking for ways where you can, um, you know, not only conveniently route the cables but also have a clean looking build is what you want to target obviously for. Um, and so removing that other back panel allows you to um, have some more freedom to move around with the My cables. Time, before you put in a motherboard, can you maybe also remove the front panel? Oh, sure. Yeah, you wanted to talk about it. Yeah, case because we do have well, right? a special fan bracket in this type of case. Yep. There we go. It's easy removed. And you can actually remove this fan bracket without um, any tools. So, as you can see, the fans are inside a frame, and there are thumb screws on top. If you remove those thumb screws, right now the fans are already installed, so of course it's now attached to the cables of the fan. Um, but that way you can easily take this out. And for example, if you want to mount a radiator in there with like a push-pull yeah. configuration, you can easily do that outside your case, configure everything and then just put it in at once and you don't need any tools for this. So you can easily just remove those uh, those two thumb screws and you're good to go. 
It's very, very convenient. But uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep them in right now because I've already installed the fans and did yeah, a bit the of fans are by default <laughs> there. There are three fans installed, but in case you want to do some fiddling around with radiators, push pull configurations, yep. then I think this uh, this is a very nice. Is there anything so. else you wanted to show under the chassis before I start building? Yeah, let's maybe also have a look at the dust filters because we have quite a lot of dust filters on the on top this one. first. Yeah, there's already a, a magnetic one on top indeed. Maybe, uh, you can take maybe that one we off. switch to the other camera. And yes. There we go. And you can see it. Yeah. So this it's a bit one. bright because it's a white case, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can easily peel off, and it's magnetic, so it's very convenient, right? Yeah. And that's where you can have separate, you know, various mounting holes for radiators, different shapes and sizes, and. You also removed the other side panel, right? Yes. Because on the inside of that one, there is also a magnetic dust filter. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this one you mean, right? Yes. Oh, so that's there also is magnetic. an extra air vent here, and there is a magnetic dust filter in front. Let me put this back first. Then, in uh, the bottom of the case, uh, underneath where the GPU or the, the PSU is located, there is a slide-out dust filter. So you can actually slide it out from the back. No, I'll just put it upside down real quick, yeah, so you can see works. it. Yep. Another removable dust filter. And then maybe you can grab the front panel. Here we are. And this is a, a very special mesh, actually, because it's extremely dense. And that will also um, help to, to prevent dust getting uh, entering your system. Yeah, it still gives you airflow, but it does not, or at least limits the amount of dust that goes in, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a really, it's maybe a little bit hard to see on camera, but the, the mesh is a lot, again. lot more. Yeah. How do you say it? It's it's a lot more dense than what you see with most uh, mesh panels. Yeah. The the. Uh, area between the holes is a lot slimmer. Yeah. So that's it's a bit more comparable to what you know from a dust filter, for example. They basically yeah. also have a lot of very tiny holes. Maybe you can go to the other cam one more time yeah. and see if you can get it. See, you can see the case through the small holes. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. I'll um, put this back on if you don't mind. I don't mm -hmm. think we need to go into the front anymore. So we've already installed all the fans. All right, anything else you want me to show? Maybe here? let's, uh, now that it's still empty, we can still easily see everything. Maybe let's talk a bit about the, the radiator uh, capacity of this case. Okay. Because it can actually fit uh, 360 millimeter radiators, not only in the front, but also in the top. So you can choose where to put it. Uh, you can also combine it. Um, I think here. in your configuration, you're gonna mount it at the top, right? Yes, that's what, um, yeah, so it depends a bit on, uh, on what you want, but you can also use dual configurator, um, du uh, dual radiator configurations. Also, if you, for example, want to do a custom loop in this, um, or like in this example, you can, for example, combine an all-in-one liquid cooler for the CPU with a graphics card that comes with an all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, so different configurations possible depending on, on your liking. I'm gonna pre-apply some cable management already, so it makes it a lot easier to build in a moment when we put in the motherboard. Depending on the chassis that you have, you may want to go with the motherboard first or go with the cooler first. In this particular case, I'd like to go with the cooler first. There's no right or wrong, basically, it just depends on, you know, your preference of building, for example. So the radiator in this case goes in the top and yeah. then Martijn will screw it on from the very top of the case. So um, in order to do this, make sure to remove the uh, <coughs> magnetic dust filter. Otherwise, you cannot reach the screw holes you need to mount it yeah. there. Michiel, do you want me to um, have the hoses in the back or in the front of the chassis? I would personally suggest you keep them like this. Okay. Um, also has to do with the location of the socket and the length of the tubes, of course. Yeah. So I would say this is the most. You can Sometimes do it in the back. Sometimes it depends on the chassis, right? Yeah, uh, but you have a bit of. Um, in the, if you turn it around, you have a bit of excess uh, tubing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would suggest to keep it like this. This okay. is a nice sweet spot, I would say. Yeah. Um, Gigaram is saying uh, I can't fit uh, two for 80 millimeter radiators in it. No, the, the 360 is the maximum. 
uh, that this case, case can fit both in the front and in the top. Yeah. Uh, let me see, we've got some screws here. So there are 12 screws, I believe, to mount this um, AIO, liquid mm -hmm. cooler. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to use four in an X pattern, if that's okay with you guys on stream. The quick and dirty one. <laughs> quick and dirty. <laughs> I mean, four is good. Obviously, make sure that you always secure them well. Um, but yeah, just for the sake of time, I think, oh, I think it's... While you screw this in, mm -hmm. let me, because today, of course, we're only using uh, an M.2 SSD. Yep. Um, but let's maybe quickly touch on the compatibility mm. um, of other storage devices. So in case you want to use uh, two and a half inch SSDs or hard mm. drive or even three and a half inch, you have multiple locations inside the case where you can fit them. Uh, so behind the motherboard tray, uh, you can actually fit two SSDs. Um, on the other side, you can fit two more SSDs stacked um, above each other. And then there is a hard disk drive tray in the bottom where you can fit either two two and a half inch drives or two three and a half inch drives. And um, another one that I see uh, some people already know is that they're um, on the uh, PSU shroud. There are, there are also s some installation options for two more two and a half inch SSDs. So you can actually fit quite many SSDs or hard drives inside this case. So in total, uh, up to um, six two and a half inch plus two three and a half inch, or if you're not using any three and a half inch, you can fit up to eight two and a half inch drives. Of course, in addition to all the M.2 slots that you have on your motherboard. And that, of course, depends per motherboard how many you have. Yep. Um, you can never have enough storage. Indeed, mm -hmm. another nice detail actually about this uh, hard drive tray that you see in the bottom with the number three on it is that there is a thumb screw in there and if you remove the thumb screw you can actually move um, the hard disk drive bay to the front of the case so in case you want even more space for your power supply or your modular cables that are sticking out you can actually create a little bit more space there by moving it a bit to further to the front of the case so that is adjustable let me see <coughs> All the RGB. All right. Skeets is asking what current AM5 boards come with eight SATA ports. Ooh, I actually don't know from top of my head if we still have any with eight. Mm. Nowadays, we see that a lot of people are, of course, moving uh, mm. more to uh, M.2 drives. Uh, of course, in case you need more SATA, you can also add in PCI Express SATA cards. I'm, I don't know if we still have. I think most have six of them. At least six, right? Yeah. yeah. The Unify boards and so on. Indeed, indeed. So I think in case you would like to use all the SSDs and hard drives that this case can fit, I think with most motherboards you would need a PCI Express adding card to create additional SATA port. All right. But this way you don't have to fill all of them, of course, but this way you also have like different options um, what about for putting them. Also, some people may want to have them visible. Then you would, for example, put them on a PSU shroud. Um, maybe if your SSD is not very pretty or your hard drive, you may want to purposely hide them behind the motherboard tray. So now Matthijn is screwing in the motherboard. Maybe time That's for a giveaway. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider, or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, uh, you can also follow the direct link uh, to Gleam that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. Um, within Gleam, you can perform certain actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have a winning. And if you're a returning visitor, make sure to claim your loyalty bonus as well. Then let me head over to my drawing screen. Can I draw a winner? Our first winner for today. There we go, Matthijn, the honor is all yours. His or her nickname is Ad Roxon. Ad Roxon, congratulations. You won our first Steam wallet code for today. So keep an eye out on your mailbox, but then we'll email um, the code to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem it. And in case you're interested in Starfield, um, it is available on Steam as well. 
So that's something where you could use it. Or if you want to play an horror game, that's of course fine as well. But congratulations. congratulations. Enjoy yes. it. Mm hmm. Well, we're almost there. In regards to connecting the motherboard. People are already asking in the Twitch chat, Starfield AMD, AMD GPU giveaway. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. <laughs> Because Matijn doesn't know yet, but I will take this PC home after. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could have it, Michiel. Now, a quick teaser, actually. If you want to see this PC more in action, make sure to also tune in next week, because it will come back. That's all I'm going to say for now. But at the end of the stream, we will also announce it what will come we'll back. do next week. All right. I think that's it for the screws. Now move over Disco to... Disco Ninja is saying your subject on Twitch needs to update. Is it not saying Starfield? What's it saying? I think it should be saying Starfield. Uh, let me see. We have our RGB. Let me check. Bump header. There we go. Oh, I see the title has changed. That's interesting. Let me fix that for you. There we go. All right. So it looks like someone touched my stream title. They did. But we fixed it. Okay. Good. We're back to uh, the Starfield PC building on Twitch as well now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to mount this in this way. <laughs> then... DeadBC77 is asking, can you paint the reference 7800 XTX white without voiding warranty? Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, afraid I'm pretty that sure if you paint graphics cards or whatever hardware... I'm afraid that will void, void your warranty. Indeed. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Maybe, maybe you can try it on an older generation first, see if it works. So, a little bit of paste. Just a bit of a P like that. Should be okay. Do, do, do. So now basically the whole motherboard is already prepared. So the, the uh, yeah. DDR5 is in there, the SSD is in there. Don't forget about the protective film on the CPU cooler as well before yep, installing it. it. Yeah, it won't cool very good otherwise. And this is actually quite nice because you may be familiar with this type of mount Oops. if you already own uh, an AM4 or AM5 system because it has some clips and mm. you can easily mount it on there and that also uh, makes the cooling compatibility quite a lot bigger. So for example, um, our all-in-one liquid coolers that were um, launched in the AM4 time, so for example our R series and our K series, um, they're all compatible with AM5 as well because they use the same uh, type of mounting system there. <laughs> Mr. Mastodox says toothpaste. <laughs> For toothpaste? On a CPU. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> but yes, Factum, it is indeed thermally conductive paste. Or thermal paste, as yeah. the short term. All right, paste. so CPU cooler installed. By the way, don't... Um, use those the other way around either. Like putting toothpaste on your CPU is one thing, <laughs> but putting thermal paste on your toothbrush, then you may be in trouble. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend. Well, this is very conductive, but I'm not sure what you're gaining with that when you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you get very cold teeth. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Panuri and Gray says they actually used toothpaste back in the day to clean copper water blocks. Yeah, actually, that's quite interesting because toothpaste is it's like very grindy, sandy, but like very tiny. So you can actually, it's also, if you have like a scratch on your screen or something, mm -hmm. you can put some toothpaste on some cloth and then wipe it over. By the way, this is not an re official recommendation. <laughs> this may void your warranty if you do so. Um, but in case you have like a scratch that annoys you, some some toothpaste on a cloth and wipe it over a bit, then you may be able to, to reduce that scratch a little bit. Yeah, Mr. Masterdog says you can also use it to clear foggy looking car headlights. Also a very good suggestion. Indeed. 
You like can. toothpaste is very multifunctional, but I wouldn't recommend it no. uh, instead of thermal paste. No. All right, okay, a bit of cable management, and then we should be good. Gigger Ram says cools the motor mouth down <laughs> <laughs> for the thermal paste layer of toothbrush. <laughs> All right, so this RGB, because we got to have all the RGB. Of course. We need the RGB for extra FPS. Well, I think your comment makes sense about looking gorgeous at night in an all-white build where RGB, you know. Yeah, it's super intense. In, I'm, in I'm not build. super into RGB, but with an all-white build, then yeah, I mean, can look very, very cool, right? Let me see. Bit of cable management. All right, so the CPU cooler is installed. Make sure to put this real tight, but don't put too much effort in it because it's plastic that you're screwing into. Um, so we should be good there. Let me see. So that's the motherboard fastened, CPU cooler installed. Um, let's do it with the power supply. I think the best way is to access this from the other side. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. And there's also a few cables that we gotta reroute first. And you can to toss aside basically. <laughs> What's that? You can put them aside now or you can al already plug them in in the motherboard as well. Yeah, I was thinking want. doing that first and then put the PSU in. Um, but there is, uh, we shouldn't have any issue, right? If you reroute this through these holes. So already starting on some cable management. So let's maybe look a little bit at the cable management options of this case. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have got quite a lot of space behind the motherboard tray, of course, to, to um, put some cables and stuff, but there are also, there is a dedicated route where you can easily route the cables from the top to the bottom, or vice versa, of course, um, with some nice straps as well to, um, to put them um, underneath so they don't stick out in all directions. Front USB. Maybe you can see them. In this case, of course, the straps are also in white. So there are a couple of uh, white MSI branded straps holding all the cables together. Of course, you can open them up and add some more cables in if you want to. If you want to. Yep. Um, so they are adjustable also uh, in terms of uh, space see. you will have available. Uh, Paul Gale is asking, does the CPU cooler have a display? No, this one does not have a display. It does have RGB in the, um, in the CPU block. Um, so there is like a, a circle basically with RGB in it. Um, but there is no screen. We do have two uh, models uh, in our lineup that do have an LCD screen. And those are the Core Liquid K series and the Core Liquid S series. Mm -hmm. Those two models come with an LCD screen. Front USB and front USB Type C. What Panorian Gray says uh, it's easier to see dust on a white build. Same reason you don't want a white colored car. They're always dirty. Actually, this mm. is what I thought as well. Yeah. And now I own a black car, and I never had a dirty car like a black one because it's <laughs> like most stuff that lands on it. You have like particles and stuff, especially in spring, and they tend to be very light. And you see them very good on my black car, so it doesn't always work like that, that white always gets dirty easiest. Connectors. It's mostly if you have like, of course, black and white are like very much contrast on one side and another. And if everything is another color, you see it very clearly. So I, I would say both are quite sensitive. Panori Gray says pollen is pollen. Yeah, those are, as pollen are, well, they, they are a torture for me anyway because I have hay fever, but also my black car they demolish me everywhere, basically. <laughs> yeah, desert sands as well. I can also see that very clearly on my car. But maybe I should also wash my car a little bit more often. I'm the kind of person that basically does that once every year. <laughs> you do that a lot more, don't you, Matthijs? <laughs> you put I'm more effort in your car. I'm all about all show, no go. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just clean, clean, clean all the time. Yeah. No, I just... If you're a car guy, then yeah, you obviously like, you know, every now and then you have to clean your car. And I can't really enjoy it sitting in a driveway, normally being pretty, but being neglected and dirty and stuff. And then, yeah, so. But also your car in general is a bit more pretty than mine. 
<laughs> I, I have a car to get from A to B. That's basically it. <laughs> yeah, I have a car that I drive mostly because I want to drive, right? Yeah. And uh, usually, and that's the, the beauty of things, I can work a lot from home. So if I then have some time off in the weekends and um, you want to have some fun, and obviously I do track racing as well, so I have a different car for that. But um, yeah, if I want to drive, <laughs> I don't want to drive something ordinary, to be honest. But I very much like cycling as well, so don't get me wrong. If it's nice weather, so obviously being Dutch, we do a lot of cycling, so still love to do that And we that don't have well. all the dedicated cycle paths for nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dorian, the critic says, black is dirtier than white. Trust me, I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal CP09 says, uh, white PC looks so dirty after a while. It depends on how you treat it. If you just at a hamburger, you don't wash your hands, and then you pick up your PC. <laughs> yes, of course. That those kind of things you will see on white. Yep. Like All the right, contrast you. between between ketchup and white is pretty big. <laughs> yeah, like potato chips or whatever. It yeah. looks messy as well in white build, for sure. It's like your keyboards, right? When you have white keyboards. Oh, you have some potato chips or. Let me see. Mm -hmm. More cable management. Uh, NRT is quite a good point. Oh. Don't get a white PC if you smoke. I think th that's that's a fair point because usually smoking makes white stuff very yellowish, mm -hmm. and it's it's way more sensitive to it than than a black case. So indeed, if you smoke, that's a bad thing in general, in my opinion. If you do it, I would suggest to do it outside. <laughs> but if you do smoke <laughs> inside then I would rather go for the black version of the case than the white one. Um, Michiel, is yes. this case designed to have the PSU fan facing downwards or up? Uh, I would suggest facing downwards. Okay. You can mount it facing upwards as well because there, there is ventilation in the PSU shroud. Mm -hmm. But if you mount it downwards, you can benefit from the dust filter that you have oh underneath. Yeah, I've made one mistake here. Cable. Up. Put that in later. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought for this chassis, but some chassis are the other way around. Um, all right, so... Andreas on Twitch has a very good question, Martijn. Oh, go ahead. What's the most disgusting thing you found when cleaning a PC? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, first of all, I don't clean other people's PCs, so that helps. Sweaty <laughs> socks, dead animals, what did you yeah, find? Yeah, like your typical things like bugs and, you know, stuff where you find, you know, I thought I had decent dust filters and things going on to protect my chassis and the insides of the PC, but then, yeah, if you're running a, let's say, a workhorse where you hardly pay any attention to and then after a year or two you open it up and, yeah, it can be shocking with the amount of spiders and stuff that you find sometimes inside, but generally... It also depends usually quite a bit where your PC is located. Exactly. Where you put it on a desk or on the floor underneath a desk and if you, for example, have a carpet floor that can make quite a difference also in terms of dust. Yeah, Filters exactly. do help. Um, in, well, that's also that one sense. of the good reasons why people should upgrade more often so you actually get a chance to look at your system again. That's true. And then clean it, right? Or just do some maintenance once in a while, that also helps. Yeah, and don't use a vacuum cleaner, for example, no. because of the static. I recommend not doing that. All right, so. Oh, Alan says, uh, dead mouse. Dead <laughs> mouse? How did that get in there? Did you le leave a uh, yep, window I have no open idea or? how it got there. I live in a rural area. <laughs> <laughs> you should wow. get a cat. <laughs> cat and mouse, yeah. I have two cats. I never have any mouse issues. Yeah, the mouse is supposed to be on the desk, not inside the PC. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, PSU, oh, almost secured. Absence of logic says on YouTube chat, my friend who lives uh, with a smoker sent me his GPU to sell and the box smelled like an ashtray before I even opened it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. can imagine. Like, if you smoke inside, it, it, basically everything in that space gets affected, so, especially if you do it more often. That's when we had last night with the barbecue as well. Left the door open for five minutes, the entire house smelled. Yeah. Right? That's also why our barbecue is in the very back of the garden, so we don't get the smell inside. <laughs> All right, so... Mr. Mastodox does have a good point. Cats bring uh, mice 
hope in the house you and, get and birds. And as yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah. point. It does not always help. Luckily, my cats are indoor cats. So the ratio of cats. I cannot bring them. It could be a nice study. The, yeah. Let's say the effectiveness of cats, whether they bring more mice or, you know, help you get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just indoor cats, problem solved. Because then they only get the mice that are already in your house. True, but maybe they will never be taught to catch mice that way. Because <laughs> that's what the outdoors are for, right? Teaching you stuff. That's true. Um, before I finish off with the final cable management, let me see, there is a CPU. GigaRam says I strip mine and renew the cooling fluid every six months. Yeah, it wow. depends a bit on what kind of, if you have like a custom loop um, yeah. that requires a little bit more maintenance, of course, than, um, uh, for example, an all in one liquid cooler. Um, but also, um, in, terms, in case you use like special types of uh, thermal paste, um, they can cool better in certain situations, but you also need to um, reapply them a little bit more often. So, yeah. for example, liquid metal you could use for that. Um, they are good thermal pastes, but they're a bit more maintenance heavy. You Absolutely. have to repaste them way more often than, than regular normal paste. Yeah, plus it could corrode the IHS and, you know, it's not pretty always. So yeah, they're also For 24-7 yeah. use, and mm -hmm. I'm not too sure about that. Mr. Masterbox says every six months I would never want it. Like, if you want a more maintenance-free PC than a regular all-in-one liquid cooler or air cooler or a safer bed than a custom loop yep. and also regular thermal paste would be the more durable option over the long term. Yep. Uh, Brimmy Boy says, how do we get the loyalty bonus? If you're a returning visitor and have participated in the uh, giveaway multiple times, then you can claim a loyalty bonus. Mm -mm -mm. Almost there. Should have done this before, the cooler. <laughs> <laughs> That's always stuff when you find out learn new chassis, right? The hard yep. way. Um, let me see, these are GPUs. While you're doing that, I will already start talking a bit about um, how you can position the GPU in this case, because there are different mounting options. Um, for all the Gangner 300 series, so the 300R in black and white and the 300P, you can choose uh, either for a horizontal or a vertical GPU mount. Horizontal is, of course, your standard GPU mount where you put your GPU directly into the PCI Express slot of your motherboard. The vertical one, you will need a riser cable, um, mm -hmm. which is included actually with a 300P because there also the vertical mount is the default out of the box. The 300R models have the horizontal out of the box. Um, these cases also come with two brackets. Um, so in this situation, we're using the 300R. The horizontal bracket um, is installed by default. You can actually take that one out, turn it around, um, 90 degrees and you can use that one as a vertical bracket <coughs> but there is also a special vertical bracket included in the box in which you can fit two additional 60 millimeter fans so you can create more airflow um, behind your graphics card as well to help to cool your SSDs um, in case you want to go for a vertical mount of course that that's completely optional um, you can also decide not to place those fans in case you don't want them um, the 300 P actually comes with those fans out of the box as well, uh, as well as an included 80 uh, millimeter fan um, further inside the case. Now for our um, pièce de résistance, our cherry on top, custom designed cable sleeved for the oh, GPU. Oh, those are pretty. Yeah. With a nice color scheme from Starfield as well. Yeah. So here you can actually see the. Um, the vertical mounting bracket with the two 60 millimeter fans installed. So this is how you would get it with the Gangneer 300P. Um, that one also comes with a 180 millimeter PCI Express 4.0 riser cable um, and one 80 millimeter fan. And that's on the other side of the graphics card. So basically, you create like an air tunnel um, on the back of your the back behind your uh, back plate of the graphics card, so in between the motherboard and the graphics card, basically, um, and this will help to cool the SSD quite a bit. So, for example, we did some testing in uh, the Gangner Airflow 300P with the fans installed and without them, 
and you see that actually for a GPU and a CPU, you also see that it's a little bit lower, of course, because you create a little bit more airflow uh, through the case as well, and the, the 60 millimeter fans are also outtake fans. Uh, but for the SSD, it makes quite a bit of difference. So in our testing, it was a six degrees Celsius difference if you use um, the additional fans with the vertical uh, GPU mount. So personal preference is um, <clears throat> when you have two 8-pin power connectors on the GPU, I personally like to use two different cables to share the load on the cable a little bit more, especially when you consider overclocking, for example. Sometimes you can use the, the splitters on a single cable. It's perfectly fine in most cases, but this is just a perf uh, personal preference. So, Alan is asking, can you go back a slide? Yes, I can. I think you mean this one. There we go. So here you see the, um, the vertical mounting bracket with the two 60 millimeter fans. This same bracket, um, not the fans, but the bracket is also included with the 300R models. Do you have that close to you, maybe, Martijn? Sorry, which one? Uh, the vertical mounting bracket that's in the accessory box. Oh, the yeah. Seat. Just give me a second. I'm just going to clean some screws. Clean the desk a little bit. <clears throat> vertical mounting bracket. <laughs> Alan says 8 meter fan. Um, the 8025 meter. is actually the, the size of the fans are 80 millimeters, 8 centimeters, and the 25 millimeters is the thickness. This that's looks why like the 60, a, yeah. 50, 15 means it's a 60 millimeter fan that's 15 millimeters thick. So that one is a little bit thinner than the 80 one. That's what the 15 and the 25 stands for. This looks like a vertical mounting yes. bracket to me. So this is uh, this comes included in an accessory box with this case with the 300R, yep. and this is the version that will uh, be installed by default in the 300P, and in that case there are already two 60 millimeter fans uh, installed there. Yeah, and so you can change yeah. the the way that the GPU is sitting. I believe this also you can remove it with thumb screws, right? Uh, yeah. And I believe it's quite easy to, to pop show it, it out then. Yeah, maybe we can, now we can still reach it properly because the GPU is not in there. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. There we go. Here you are. Yeah. That's it. You can simply swap it out for the, uh, let me see. You can see that You can actually empty. also turn this one 90 degrees and use this one as a vertical mount. That's also an option because it's exactly square. Yep. Um, but uh, in that case, you of course have seven slots of thickness available basically. Um, with the other one, you have four slots, so you can fit up to four slots graphics card and you can fit in uh, an additional two 60 millimeter fan. But for today's build, we're going to stick to the uh, default horizontal GPU mounting position, so directly into the motherboard. Do you, are we going to use Wi Fi by any chance? Uh, no, I have a LAN cable uh, underneath the desk for you already. So. Okay. So I'm not going to mount the antennas? No, then. no need to today. Okay. Um, now, big moment. The CPU, uh, sorry, the GPU is going in. And in this case, I literally, I'm going to put it flat. Just got to be careful and mindful of the cables here. Actually, I think we're pretty okay just doing it like this. Uh, this one, oh, need the other screwdriver, because we have a GPU holder, right, against sagging. Yes. Which should make our lives a lot easier. Oh. And so, two slot and a little, so it's almost two and a half slot car, so you only need to pop out two PCIe covers. Let's maybe talk a little bit about the, the graphics card stand you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's the omnidirectional graphics card stand, and it's, uh, it's a very convenient thing. It doesn't need any tools to adjust. Uh, it also supports latest high-end graphics cards because you can adjust uh, for different thicknesses of graphics cards as well. It is made out of 8 millimeter thick tempered glass, and it also has some nice addressable RGB inside. And you can also rotate it 90 degrees, so you can use it in different orientations, also both for the vertical and the horizontal GPU mount. Um, by the way, the addressable RGB is, is present in all models. So also the 300P that comes with black fans does have addressable RGB um, in this graphics card stand in case you don't want any 
and addressable RGB, of course you can plug it out, it won't be illuminated. So it's now squeezing or kind of sandwiching the graphics card? Yeah. That's what you want, right? Yes, indeed. So you also don't have, uh, let's say, uh, vibrations or sag or... Yeah, that's indeed... It's, it, we often hear this from end users that especially with the big long graphics cards nowadays that can also they tend to be quite heavy as well. During transport, they're a bit worried about them and this graphics card or a graphics card stand will help to, um, to hold it also during transportation. It will prevent GPU sagging. And of course, it just looks pretty with a nice ARGB in there. How does this look in terms of, is it flat? As far as you can tell, oh, you have a different camera. Yeah, option for from that. this one, That's it's difficult. Let me move to let this one. Let me see. Uh, not entirely. So let me. We want to make it flush. Is what we call it, right? This looks better. I think this is a bit better. The support pieces, by the way, you can also yeah. take out. So if you push them down, there is like a small. Uh, gap in a tempered glass and that way you can take them out in case you only want to use it for example one on the top or on the bottom Yeah. Right now really cool. Matan use it like in a sandwich configuration So it really holds it firmly in, in one position So here we go oh, I'm Going for the colored one in the middle does that make sense? Yeah, that's the prettier way. The prettier way? Yeah. Okay. Brian G says, I think that uh, GPU looks better vertical. Uh, it, yeah. It depends. Well, I think this one is also quite decorated on the back plate. So yeah. I, I actually also like uh, how it is right now. But indeed, there's something to it. Yeah, it's, it's personal preference, right? Yeah. That's it. All right, I think we're um, almost good to go. Let me double check. CPU fan, pump fan. Just want to make sure that those are attached. Uh, but do note that for a vertical GPU mount, you do need a riser cable. That one comes included with the 300P, but not with the 300R. Uh-huh. Right. But you can still mount it vertically. If you get a separate riser cable, you also can mount it vertically in the 300R. So let me see. If we're able to close the chassis now, so that's always a bit of a challenge when you do cable management. Mm. But I'm pretty confident this will work. Famous last words. All right. In the meanwhile, because you guys may be wondering why is this case specifically called airflow, it has to do with the fact that it has a lot of airflow. Of course, the mesh in the front makes a big difference there. Um, here you actually see the different types of flow that we're using. Um, this is also in the configuration that Matijn is using now. The front fans are the intake. Um, the fan inside the power supply is actually also an intake, and that one throws it out directly uh, out of the back of the, the power supply. Then the uh, fan in the back is outtake, and also the three fans that are on the all-in-one liquid cooler they are pulling the air out of the case upwards, so it will exhaust the hot air from the top of the case as well. So this is what the airflow looks like for this configuration. Mm -hmm. Sorry, cleaning up a little bit. Just want to make sure that everything fits. Yeah, you have to make it look pretty. Nicely, yeah. It's always the case when you have a lot of fans and RGB headers and... Uh, in NRT is saying if you don't need a drive cage, you can take it out, presumably. Yep. Yes, you can. Uh, actually, you can not only take it out, you can also slide it forwards. So in case you do still want it, but you want more space for your power supply, you can move it more to the front of the case. Um, there's actually a single thumb screw that you have to take out and then you can slide it to the front. Yep. Oh, I hit myself in the head. <laughs> Here you also see the switchable PCI Express bracket that we just show you. So out of the box, mm. all these cases have both included. So for the 300P, it comes with the vertical installed and has the horizontal in the accessory box. For the 300R models, it comes with the horizontal out of the uh, box in the case itself and has the vertical in the accessory box included. Mm. 
Now for a little bit more cable management. Yep. All right. Yes, all good. All good. I hope. We'll see. By the way, at home, always test your system first before you close it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually prefer to test my motherboard outside each system that I build, just in case. To make True, sure but also still, if you build it and you forgot to connect something or anything, you can still easily reach it. Yeah. All right. So, I think, if I'm not mistaken... Yeah, check, check, double check. You connected everything. I see pump fan, CPU fan, power... 24 pin. Front connectors, power button. Yep. Moment of truth, I guess. Um, PSU cable. Where's Mr. Mastodoc says panel misaligned in the front. Is it? Panel misaligned? No, 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 no. Wait, just wait till I power it on. <laughs> There's something bonus material here. Um, I need a power cable, Michiel. Is it uh, on the there floor? Should be one in the in the total. Bundle yeah. of cables so. <laughs> in the mess on the floor. Yeah, there is like a bundle of cables with a power cable and a oh, Ethernet a cable. Display port. Display port HDMI for the capture as well. I've got one power cable here. Um, so Matein, how did you like building in this case? Was it doable? Yeah, you can see it's very very easy building this case. Nice. Well, we can only tell if the result is good, right? That's true. Let's be honest. So let's find out if it works or not. Got two power cables. So these are the cables that I need, Michiel. I'm not sure yes, if you can see it. Yes, that's indeed the, the. All right. So network. The complete package that you need. There is a quick summary of the the features of these cases. Of course, we went through them. This indeed, additional power them. cable you don't need. There's two power cables in here. There's two power cables. Yeah. In the bundle, there's there's two. Well, maybe this is a separate one. Oh, this may be a separate one. Yeah, yeah. Throw that one away because I'm not sure if it's plugged <laughs> in on the other end. <laughs> All By right. the way, in case you're wondering for the prices of these cases, it depends a bit per model. So the uh, black model of the 300R is 169 US dollar, uh, that's excluding VAT, or 169 euros, that's including 20% VAT. May differ a bit depending on your region because the VAT percentage differs a bit. Uh, the white model um, is a little bit more expensive at 179 US dollar or euros. Um, and then the 300P is also 169. Um, the RGB models also come with an addressable RGB hub uh, where you can also plug in fans. Um, the Gangnir uh, 300P does not come with that hub but comes with the riser cable included for the vertical GPU mount. So it's a bit up to you what, what your preference is. One really targeted at even more airflow, the other also some nice RGB in there. Um, Kvivi is asking, can you boot without the disk? Well, there is an SSD in there, and we cheated a bit and already pre-installed win Windows on that one. So, it hasn't exploded yet, Michiel. It's powered on. I don't see any flames, no fire. I'm just going to oh, peel this peeling. off. That's always good. Just to help with the misalignment thing, because obviously that looked misaligned because of that thing still being on there. I'm not sure I see that the system is it. doing green uh, once every now and then. <laughs> And that's something our green screen chroma key thing struggles with, of course. <laughs> mm, yep. But it does look very pretty. So. I think on this version you also have an LED button on the front, right? Maybe you can switch to another LED mode so we don't... Oh, this is the green one for sure. So what's the best color to fit with uh, Starfield? I think red, right? There's some red elements in the graphics card as well. It's really cool. Yeah. Looks good, looks good. So this works, it's just that uh, monitor is not waking up, so let's see. It could be um, that it is now displaying only to the capture card. Aha, uh -huh. so you need to enable my screen then. Let me see if we, oh no, we still don't have any signal there either. Are you sure it works? Let's see. Should I plug out the ca pull out the capture card for a sec? See if that yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. Try to boot it with only the display port. Okay. And this, people, is why you should never close your PC before you tested it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, 
could be fair something very small so we'll find out it turns off normally so suspecting it did boot to windows to be honest mv lover says i bet it won't go above 80 fps native resolution on an rx 7900 xdx and a 7800 x3d i think it can go higher Mm -hmm. Mr. Mestrock says it also needs to train memory at first boot. That's a very good point. That's true. Mouse is turned on, keyboard's turned on. Paul is asking CPU power cable. I think that's nope. plugged in. Install, or else we wouldn't have system boot. I think you even installed two of them, right? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Is there a debug LED on this uh, board? Yes, there is. Okay. Where is it? But it could be doing memory training. Yeah. Let's do a giveaway then. Okay. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Or if you're, if you're watching or on uh, YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. Uh, if you are already signed up uh, earlier today, no need to do it again. You will automatically be included in the next drawings as well. And our next winner. Oh, this is a very difficult one, Martijn. This is definitely yours. I cannot pronounce this. Uh, <laughs> Medic Solcano. Congratulations. I'm not sure if it's pronounced correctly, but you also won a Steam wallet code. Congrats. So make sure to uh, keep an eye on your mailbox, then we'll email the code to you in the coming days um, with some instructions on how to redeem it. Congratulations. Yep. Congrats. Enjoy it. Well. So do one of the lights light up on the easy LED, uh, the easy debug LEDs? Yeah, we'll see. Let me see. Troubleshooting. Turned off. Maybe it's because the new CPU was installed. It's taking a bit longer. Because I see the keyboard and mouse come on as well. You can also try to clear the CMOS. Because it may be holding settings of an earlier configuration as well. Yeah, the easy debug LED is completely off. Okay, that's a good sign. Yeah, and I kind of suspected it was already booted to Windows since I pressed the power button and it took like 10 seconds to shut down. So Maybe I have a wrong display port cable, is that possible? In this bundle here? It should be the correct one. Mm. Shall I check it for you? Yeah, I think this is the right one. You're right. Yeah, it should be plugged in. That's funny. But you do also have the HDMI connected now, right? Now I have, yeah. Kay. So you should be able to see that. Yeah, and easy debug LED is completely turned off, so. Now let me see if we maybe already get something on the capture card. Nope. Not yet. I don't know, Michiel. Should we start do some debugging? Yes. For practice? We definitely will. Uh, clear CMOS is on the board or on the back? I think you on this board, you may have one on the back as well. Wait. There is one question. Look, I press the power button, it takes 10 seconds to close, so. It could be that it is indeed booted into Windows. I, I feel it has booted to Windows, so. I'm just gonna double check. See if everything is secured. Secured, secured. Memory's in, CPU's in. Let me replug the display port to the monitor. I can. It should be okay. It is turned on. I can maybe reseat. Oh, I pull one of those clips out now. Those are easy to put back in, right? Okay. Zhao says, DisplayPort cable is dead. 
That is a possibility. Yeah, it could be. Because it feels Let like it's booted to Windows. So. For another display port cable, just to make sure that's not the issue. One other thing I'm just going to try real quick. Reseat the graphics card, sometimes it helps. Here, try this display port instead. It's a bit right, shorter. Ju though. Just give me one second. I'm trying to. Just to be sure we see the graphics card as well. Try the short cable? Yeah, let's try that one. Okay. Mm. Then at least we can check if uh, Jiao was right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your cable is not rated to DisplayPort 2.1, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> see, question in chat what the monitor is that we're using. That is actually a very good question. <laughs> I believe it's an MAG274, at least 1440p. I don't know the exact one here. I have to ask Ralph for that. One other thing we can try is... <laughs> Phil Insecto says in Twitch chat, finally a real PC assembly. It doesn't boot on the first try. And yeah. It's not known why, just like life itself. Complete realism, this Indeed. is. There is no PC building simulator that can give you teach you these lessons. So, <laughs> um, all right. Easy debug LED. Keyboard lifts up, lights up. Yep. Green light. Monitor blimps, blinks for a second. <laughs> Maybe it is still training memory. I'm one crazy cow is asking, is the motherboard throwing an error code? No, I don't think it is. No, Easy Debug LED is off. It showed me a green light for boot. <laughs> Giga Ram said it does work. They are just doing this so we don't feel bad when we can't get a boot <laughs> on the first go. <laughs> yes, it's all to make you feel good, Giga Ram. Skates is asking, are the fans spinning on the GPU? Yeah, the fans are spinning on the GPU. All three. This is interesting. All right. Let's try, maybe with cable management, we may have, perhaps because I pressed too hard on the side panel. Let's find out. Frankie said, is saying, <laughs> or made a card and get another one. For the card, the card we actually tested, so we're sure that one works. We do have another CPU, though. Yeah, and this is... Um, yeah, this is another CPU that, that we tested, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me see. Could be my poor cable management skills that messed this up. We just don't know. Guess we'll find out. Let me see if I can remove these reels for a second. Let's see if that makes Mr. any Master difference. saying, is the BIOS up to date for a 7800X3D? Yes, there was actually a 7950X3D in there earlier. Yeah. Doo -doo. I love it how the community, you know, starts thinking and helping, and <laughs> that's really cool, guys. Panorian Gray says, I would seriously try reseating the memory. Yeah, yeah. what also sometimes work is, works is just use a single memory module. Correct. But seeing as we have no easy debug LED, it looks kind of OK, right? That's true. Or else it would have popped up the memory. Don't you think? Yeah, usually it would, indeed. 
But we'll try that next. I'm just removing the um, sleeved cables for a sec, see if that makes any difference. At least you saw me remove the protective film on the CPU cooler, so <laughs> there's that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and otherwise also we can try a clear CMOS still. Sure. I guess another day in the office, guys. <laughs> Building a PC and then having a few tiny issues, but we'll figure it out. All right. Indeed, people also have another good suggestion to see if it's the graphics card or not. You can also always connect it to um, the motherboard itself as these CPUs. IGPU, the yeah, may, IGPU. it may be the IGPU thing, but it shouldn't be. Could be very well. Yeah, got screen now. Hey. Interesting. So what did you do? I uh, removed these uh, for a sec, just in case. Okay. And things are working now, so. That could be a cable issue. Could be, you know. Do we want to reconnect them to find out? Like proper uh, troubleshooting? Yeah, sure. Cool. They look okay. See no issues with them. Oh, look. We have something to capture. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put these on the side for now. We'll focus on the system first. We'll take another look in a bit. So, at least the evidence is there. That hopefully it wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric won't make fun of me. <laughs> I'm one crazy cow says I blame Linus. <laughs> blame Linus. I blame Eric for everything. <laughs> We all always blame yeah. Eric. <laughs> so how do you want me to put this um, on the table? Do you want me yeah, to close it up again? And I think it's okay like this. Yep. So I'll close it up. I was pretty sure it wasn't uh, anything hardware related. Maybe the cable wasn't well seated when I did the cable management. I don't know. Couldn't find anything wrong with it. So. You mean in between the, uh, yeah, I got squeezed, the cables maybe. from the, the PSU to the extension cable correct and yeah. it's probably because I squeezed too hard putting the side panel back on or something so valuable lesson for everybody so I was correct right you shouldn't have closed the panel <laughs> that, that totally jinxed it <laughs> <laughs> you could say that <laughs> but as long as you fix it yourself I mean huh? that's true oh, this is a short cable should I uh, well we can now try uh, the other cable again or? yeah all right, so I'll let's turn use the, the other display off port again. because this is a very short display port cable, which is not. Very you good. see why my hunch was there we go. that the system was booting into Windows because the fact that it's now exactly doing the same. Yeah, the way it responded also looked like it was. Then it's really weird. I don't know what's going on. Ah, you have that Back sometimes. Back to the longer display port. So, Joe, you were incorrect. It was not the display port cable. Well, we don't know yet. <laughs> That's true. Not 100% sure yet. Okay, we will find out now. <laughs> now I hope he's right, just for you. <laughs> mm. All right. Yep. Oh, see, here. So many RGB cables and stuff. And yeah, that's always the thing with RGB. <laughs> there is more cable management involved in RGB systems. Yeah. Ooh, Santiago's asking, how much is this PC in total? That's a very good question. I don't know from the top of my head. But if you add up all the specifications that you will find in the bottom visual, uh, throw them into a basket at an online shop, that will give you an idea. Yeah, but, but it's this quite is like high end. One of the best of the best ones, right? That you yeah. can. It's a very high end graphics nowadays. card. All right, let's go back to the long display port cable. Go again. 
You know, put it like this for the front camera as well. It looks pretty. Now I've earned my coke. <laughs> for all the troubleshooting. Let me it wasn't the display port cable. Because it's working again, so. Nice. Uh, let me see. So Master Dog says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Rule number two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this works. Um, I'm just going to reinstall the chipset driver. Just a little bit of advice when you swap CPUs. Maybe a useful thing to do. Perhaps what resolution are you running? Sorry? I got an interesting capture from your PC. I don't know. Should I wiggle the HDMI car, uh, cable? Yeah, is it duplicated on your system? Uh, it says extend. Okay. Now it says duplicate. Yes, there we go. Now we can see what you do. <laughs> uh, Concern is asking ultra wide. No, it's not. That's why I was surprised by the way it looked. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a 16 by 9 monitor. Really How far can I push one. this? Uh, so you can still see. It's not too bad. Villain Secto says, don't breathe too hard near that PC just in case. <laughs> okay, Matthijs. Oh, look, it's fully stable Stop now. breathing until the end of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the rest of the desk that's kind of unstable. It's not the PC. <laughs> yeah, Mama Beach 159 says RGB at 60 FPS. Everyone knows only 60. Like with how much RGB we have today, it should be at least 100, right? And Levels also the, RGB, the reflective element of the of the white. So maybe 120 even. I would say the amount of fans times 20 FPS. So. <laughs> That's from so guys, how cool. do you think the system looks? Do you like it? Or is it maybe not your cup of tea? That's fine as well, of course. Just give us your honest opinion. Pretty or not? FTX says, beautiful design. Sweetabix says, looks amazing. Thank you, thank you. Or well, I should thank Martijn for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the actual build time was pretty quick. It's just a little yeah, bit of troubleshooting. Yeah, quite quick that's, indeed. That's all says, I got 144 with my 20 RGB fans on. <laughs> Santiago says, is that enough fans for the 7900 XTX? Yeah, we're three actually fans. using quite a lot of fans. So there are three fans in the front. There are three in the top. There's yeah. one in the back. That's already seven fans. Then there are three on the graphics card itself. And there is one in the power supply. There are quite a lot of fans in that PC. Expo. So I'm going to... Because the BIOS got reset. One little tip for everybody Pitta is... Sector says, I like it a lot. And V Lover says, cool. Cool. NRT says, the front isn't great, but the rest is. That's fine as well. It's, it's maybe not for... Alan also says, it looks good, but not for me. Gigaram says, it's definitely eye candy. One dark man looks good. Great job. Yeah, it looks like... Most people li like the way it looks. Uh, Mr. Master says, I like white, looks good, but I'm old, I, I prefer something a bit more minimalistic, less RGB. I can see that too. And the good thing is you can turn RGB off or keep That's it at a single color as well, right? But for example, personally, I, I also like, for example, closed side panels, so I don't have to do cable management. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But I, I, for example, have a closed case as well. I, I can see where Mr. Master Dux is coming from. Well, you know, and I think yourself are also very much mini ITX lovers, right? Yes. Small, small form factor systems. You know that I have two at home. I'd love to upgrade and mod and sometimes even you use have a like hammer or a saw. You've got the tiny brother of this motherboard, don't you? I do, yeah. So that's the, the MPG B650i Edge Wi-Fi. So that's the, basically the mini ITX version of this motherboard, but the same look and feels also with the silver heat sinks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really cool and, and it's got a lot of features. you also have the same CPU on it, right? 7800 7, XD. yeah. I've got one system with a 5800 XD and one system with a 7800 XD. Nice, nice. And, um, yeah, they've been working flawlessly and I, wish, I just wish I had more time to play around with them because the only games that I play is 3D Mark, to be honest. <laughs> 
nowadays, unfortunately. I'm still on an AM4 system. I run a, a 5600X on the MPG That's really good too. 550i. So we are now live. Made sure to reinstall the chipset drivers. We've got some overlays that we can enable. Concern says, I live in Thailand. I had to give up a mini ITX. It's too hot for compact systems here. Yeah, cooling, of course, the smaller you get, the more difficult cooling becomes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to be very careful also with your component choice. Like, for example, oh. a 7900 X3D or a 7800X3D is actually quite power efficient. So you can still use that fine in, uh, in mini ITX. But if you're really going for like a, a 7950X, it becomes a little bit more difficult, of course. What's the PCIe device? I don't know, PCIe device. Hello, hello, Dark Knight Terror. Welcome, welcome. So. Oh, GigaRam has two systems in, the, in one case. With an MEG Ace X570 uh, and an uh, X570 Mini ITX in the bottom. That's also cool. Like dual system in one case. But it yeah, does make, absolutely. it has to be a big case then. Yeah. If you have an extended ATX, or, uh, or no, it is a regular ATX, but ATX and Mini ITX combined. Oh, the Mini ITX is, uh, is GigaRam's game server. That is cool though. The color changing or? Yes. Ah. It's trying to make it blueish, like ice and white. And yep. Did I press the wrong button? Oh no, the color is changing because the effect. Maybe not. You do have an LED button, right? Down on top, there is an LED button. It's just only the fan color changing or the... Yeah, but now it's it's changing within the effect. Oh, now I can oh. see it flash, yeah. That's weird. Let me try again. I think you had the power button. Yeah. <laughs> As all of a sudden, the RGB disappeared. Interesting. But yeah, mini ITX is, is more usually a bit more difficult to build. So if you're like a beginning PC builder, you can do it. Like, for example, um, a couple of months ago, we did a mini ITX build in a live stream. Actually, Eric did that. It was his first mini ITX build because he always builds ATX. And it was in the Cooler Master NR200P. That is still a relatively compact case, but it's not ultra compact, which still makes it kind of doable to build in it. For example, I own a very small case. It's only seven liters. And that's, of course, way more difficult to build in. So if you're a beginning PC builder, maybe don't go for the ultra small ones because those are really challenging. And you have to do everything correct also to get your cooling right, optimize a bit. Um, so if you're just starting on PC building and if you want to do ATX, try to go for a somewhat bigger mini ITX case because it's a, it's a lot more forgiving than uh, a very tiny one. Let me see. Reboot it now. Should I try the colors again? Look, as soon as I press this button, it goes black. Are you pressing the right button? Or, is <laughs> <laughs> or are you pressing the reset button? Oh man, yeah. I thought, I'd, I, thought I pressed the LED button, but it was, it's exactly the same button. It's just located in a different yes. uh, thing at the top. Sorry about that. <laughs> wow. That's funny. <laughs> okay, now try the LED button. Yeah, all right. That's you can already do it so while it's booting. That's a tip as well. Hey, yeah, now this it works. works. This is better. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing buttons blindly yeah. is not really Always helpful. read the text next to the button yeah. before you press it. I, I was 100% convinced it was the LED button, but it's the... <laughs> <laughs> you know the saying, have you tried turning it off and on again, right? You already did three times. <laughs> I did. The funny thing is now Windows wants me to recover. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing with this PC? <laughs> oh. Alan says, I will never pick on Eric again. Ah, just do so. <laughs> just for the sake of picking on Eric. <laughs> hey, you started. You wanted me to change the color, so I... That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> So what more effects do you have available? I'm not pressing any more buttons on the chest. <laughs> no, no, no. 
Actually, if you hold it for a longer period of time, the correct one, the LED one, then it will pulse for a bit, and then you know it will sync with the motherboard because the uh, RGB header of the or the, the header of the, the for the RGB hub, mm -hmm. that one will sync with the motherboard then. Okay. So everything that is connected to the RGB hub will then sync through the addressable RGB header. Oh, okay. Well, we can so, for example, try. if in MSI Center you have the rainbow mode selected and your motherboard and your memory is doing the rainbow thing, mm -hmm. if you sync it up by long pressing the LED button, then all the fans will start to do the same effect. Yeah. And also, in this case, uh, um, the GPU stand with the RGB in there. Well, we can give it a try on the right button this time. I'm one crazy cow says that's why I use Linux. Well, you don't get that error message then, but still, if you press the reset button all the time, also your Linux system <laughs> will reset all the time. Yeah, that reset button is a physical one, so yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter, matter which you're OS you're running. Linux. That's my bad. All right, so now we should be able to have a sneak preview. Let's see. All right, turn on some graphs, fire up the game. <laughs> and VLover says professional. Yeah, we, we always make these errors on purpose so you know what not to do, right? Yeah. It's educational. That's, exactly. that's exactly what the stream is. Usually, we never make any building errors. Nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had any issues. No. Never. This is just to prepare you guys for real life. <laughs> well, I hope you can see the screen now. I'm not going to press any other Hello, buttons Hello, Brata. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> One crazy guy says, never. No, nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> Everything Wink. usually always boots at once. We never forget to connect any cables. <laughs> All right. 20, 23.30 is where we are. See, a very good question from Ibrahim123. When is the case coming out? Uh, um, it should release in most areas worldwide in the second half of September. So in uh, a couple of weeks' time in most regions, you should be able um, to buy them. Is this so because all three versions will be, uh, will be launched in the second half of September. Is this because of the capture card, Michiel? What's with the... Uh, 60 uh, locked? Or is this something... Shouldn't be the capture oh, card. Probably the v sync I think. The display got reset after that we switched be, yeah. um, display port cables and stuff. So it's probably back at 60 hertz. Uh, Nitrous Oxide 10 is asking, is a winner announcement on stream or via email? Uh, during the stream, we'll always announce the winner and we will contact them through email. So if you're one of the winners, you will get an email a couple of days later with the code and some instructions on how to redeem it. Uh, Ibrahim yeah. says, I mean, Canada, it might come uh, later. It's best to check with your local reseller, but I think also in North America, it, it should be quite soon. In a couple of weeks, I think you should also be able to buy it in Canada. Killing the game real quick so we can go back to proper display. Can you maybe adjust your scaling a little bit? It's yeah, super and I small. think <laughs> it's also due to the fact that we have the capture card on, or not. And it shouldn't see. make an issue. Shouldn't this be an works. issue for your monitor setting. Okay, so this works. And you want me to change the scaling to how much? Like 150, I think. 150? Yeah, already much better. Okay. Um, Let's try again. Theathan is asking, who has won so far? Let me quickly go. Ed Roxon has won, and Medic Solcano has already won. Maybe we should give away one more. That's a good idea. So if you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so. MSI.com slash two slash insider or follow the direct link that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, so let's draw our third winner of this live stream. And Martijn, the honor is all yours again. Uh, Isopropolis. Isopropolis, congratulations. You also won a Steam Wallet code. So keep an eye out on your mailbox, then we'll email the code to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem it. And we hope you enjoy it. Congrats. 
Congrats. Enjoy. Gigaram is asking, what's that overlay? I, I like it. This is actually oh, this is the AMD built in. one. Yeah, yeah, this is built in in, in the Adrenaline. Uh, so AMD Radeon Adrenaline software has the ability to uh, show an overlay about your system performance, your GPU, your CPU, your memory, uh, basically so you can keep track of uh, not only your FPS, as you can see in the far right, uh, top far right corner, uh, which is now good at 165, right? We're happy with that. I will go into the the game uh, menu real quick to see what settings we're at, but uh, so far it looks good. Uh, 165 FPS, like sync to the monitor, which is good. Um, but yeah, with the overlay, you can basically keep track of your um, your system's performance while you're uh, while you're gaming or benchmarking, for example. And you can simply turn them on by either going into the Adrenaline menu in Windows or in any game, press Alt R, and you have this overlay pop up, basically, as you can see now. And here you get to uh, play around with what you want to enable on screen. So you can enable multiple things. Uh, you can say, I want CPU frequency added, for example. Um, for the GPU, let's say uh, you want to see clock speed. Um, yeah, let's see. You want temperature, of course. Um, let's see. Maybe power draw, if you're interested in that as well. Um, there's various things you can select, basically. And, Simply press Alt R again and it's gone and you have added that to the um, overview basically. It's now showing up this big because we chose to, so you can actually see it on screen. Um, but you can also adjust um, the size of the overlay and say, hey, I want this to be really small, for example, like this. Um, so it does not distract you from playing. Uh, but yeah, every now and then you can take a look at your GPU or CPU performance, temperatures. So you can basically make sure that your system is running fine as in, and as is uh, intended, uh, as you how you built it, um, compared to the specs and the number of fans you have in there, but also your ambient temperature and so on, right? So um, realistically, you should be able, um, you know, to expect um, the performance, let's say, averaged out on CPU reviews or GPU reviews in terms of temperatures and so on, as long as you, you know, your room temperature is also close to. Um, let's say 20, 21 degrees, or 69C, 70C, uh, F, sorry. Um, and that's where um, you'll find that, you know, the GPU running, if in this case, currently 67C, so pretty good, I would say. In terms of temperature, we're still at 140 FPS. FatDox8 says, this is an MSI stream, use Afterburner. No worries, you can <laughs> decide what you prefer. You can still do it, huh? yep. But, um, yeah, this but is like just... But like if you have the adrenaline software installed, you also have this at your disposal. Maybe you like Afterburner better. Yeah. It's, it's all up to you what you want to use. Both so are perfectly fine, uh, compatible with AMD cards, so you, you can use either. So we're gaming at Ultra, basically. It's set to custom because I turned motion blur to low because I'm not a big fan of motion blur. Um, You're not? <laughs> Everyone loves motion blur. Obviously, you can leave it on Ultra <laughs> and look at the <laughs> FPS. And it's just super smooth, right? It's like the one setting you should always turn off motion blur. I'm still surprised by how many games have that on by default. Because I think most people absolutely hate motion blur. Yeah, but sometimes it can be a bit more immersive depending on the title and, you know, type of game you play where motion blur sometimes have something to add in terms of um, the way you experience the game, for example, a racing game and you're going really fast around corners and stuff. And I just have a couple of very heavy beers, then I will have motion blur by default. <laughs> I don't need that you setting have natural in my game. motion blur from yourself <laughs> on a Saturday night, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Can we explore this area? Man, this is cool. So yeah, we're at 164 FPS. Isn't V-Sync on? It looks like it's syncing with the refresh rate of the monitor. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's on right now? Yeah. Ah, OK. That makes sense. So the monitor is now at 165, right? That's the spec from the monitor. We're playing at, what is it, 1440p, I believe? Yeah. 1440p, everything on Ultra, on the Radeon RX. Now let's kill VSync to see what it can do. Oh, you want to do that? Yes. Uh, OK. Uh, where is VSync? Yes, there we go. Off. <laughs> I'm one crazy cow says marriage causes motion blur too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
What is this? I need to talk to him. Uh, I think it's still locked to FreeSync, even though we turned VSync off. Probably pro part of the preset. All right. Oh, you have an objective here. See? But it f plays absolutely fantastic if you look at the uh, FPS here. Uh, concern is asking color? if you can switch off FSR to run the native resolution. I can do that for sure. Though, By the way, why would you want to do that if you're having a great experience in terms of um, how it looks and how it plays right now? Depends a bit on what you want. If you want to have like the, the best fidelity and want to sacrifice FPS, then of course native resolution would be like the standard option. Sure. Um, and if you still get a very good FPS, then it can be worth it. So you can resolution scale, put it in 100. Graphics preset. By the way, if you're curious about this game, next week this PC will be back for some more Starfield. Uh, we will do a Starfield gameplay stream. So today, of course, was all about building the Starfield themed PC, and now we're quickly checking out performance. But if you want to see some more gameplay of Starfield, make sure to tune in next week as well. Uh, and we will also play it on the latest MSI gaming monitors. So in combination with this nice Starfield uh, themed PC that we built today. Ah, now I can move forward. So we're now at a native resolution, no resolution, scaling going on, upscaling. We're 100%. Like 136, 131, it says? Yeah. Or, yeah, so. Still. Around 130 good. FPS on native resolution. Yeah, I can think if you. Um, what else? Sharpening. Not sure. It doesn't have any influence. Oh, it's because VRS is on. No. Indiana Roy is asking 4K OLED 240 Hz. This is a 4040p 165 Hz. And let me see. So another question. Max Plan is asking, is that with mods? I was told the game doesn't run higher than 30 FPS. I'm not sure actually, I haven't tried any mods on Starfield yet. Oop, I touched something. And now something's happening, we feel. <laughs> Somewhere in the universe. Hmm. Even M123 is asking, do the Steam wallet codes expire? Yes. I don't know how long they're valid, but at a certain point they can expire. So I would always recommend if you win one, just claim it on your account directly. Because eventually they can expire. Let me see. But I don't know the exact expiration date of, uh, of the code. <coughs> uh, Villain Sector is asking, I've always wondered what you do with the PCs you assemble at streams. Do you disassemble them, raffle them off, give them away or ship them somewhere? Depends very much. Very often we take them apart again and separate components are, for example, used for internal testing pur purposes or we use it in different streams. Um, sometimes if we have like um, a couple of months ago we did our Project Zero build, for example, where uh, the connectors are located on the back of the motherboard. Um, that one actually went um, to Germany for uh, for an event. It went to uh, IFA and Gamescom as well. So it was on the on display at our booth there. Uh, so it depends very much on, on the exact hardware and 
sometimes it also goes to uh, one of our local marketing teams and they can use it um, uh, for example for certain um, uh, marketing purposes or they so sometimes have events that they do with them or they have collaborations with uh, with partners or maybe influencers that, that they use them for so it very much differs <laughs> Andres says Mike has a hundred of PCs assembled in his house Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> people think I don't have a basement but actually I do Oh, you need something. Uh, Pranav says, is the giveaway code, does it work in India? Oh, I don't know exactly. I know it is valid in most regions worldwide, but this is something that Steam changes every now and then. So it is never possible for us to say 100% it will work in your country. So that's also, also why there's always a disclaimer in the email. We, um, we do have worldwide codes, but like some specific regions can be excluded for whatever reason. But that's out of our control. So that's uh, that's difficult. All right. How do you call this guy? Amazon. I always let Chad decide. What should we call him? <laughs> what's what's our hero's name in this we game? We need some good suggestions in the chat. In um, in Hogwarts Legacy, my character was called Puddle Model. <laughs> what? A puddle model. Puddle model. Mr. Masterdog says average Joe. <laughs> average Joe. With we'll, uh, uh, we'll take the background three suggestions. as a bounty hunter. Yeah. Max Bunny says Bob Bobbington. <laughs> Chad. Space <laughs> Captain Sparrow. I like that one. That's cool. Yeah, that one's nice. Space Let's go Captain with that one. Sparrow. Space Let's go Captain with that Sparrow. One. Space Captain Sparrow. Okay, cool. Thanks for the suggestion. Was that <laughs> Super Shulk? Yeah. Confirm. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. See how Space Captain Sparrow thrives in the world of Starfield. Meanwhile, uh, Michiel, do you have any other topics, anything else you want to highlight during today's stream? Maybe we can talk a little bit more about the uh, graphics technologies that you guys are offering. Okay. So do you want me to close the game real quick? Uh, no, you can just keep it open. I can okay. just uh, switch for you. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, so smart access memory. Um, I mentioned when we built this uh, system now, um, Always make sure to enable that if you have supporting hardware, so that means an AMD Ryzen processor um, or, uh, and an AMD Radeon graphics card uh, to basically unlock more uh, performance from your system where the graphics cards uh, basically talk straight to the CPU without overhead. This is overhead. a setting you find in the BIOS, by the way. In case this setting you can find in the BIOS, it's most of the time turned on by default, even with the default load up to my yeah, settings. I think in, in our in BIOS is nowadays it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you do want to make sure that you've enabled smart access memory to unlock um, basically some free performance. So that's uh, that's an uh, yeah something to remind everybody of. Talking um, about yeah. free performance, did you enable Expo? I did. Ah, okay. Good. Haha, you missed that part. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I did miss it. I that. went back into the BIOS, make sure to optimize the defaults, Perfect. enable everything. So everyone in chat, never forget if you use memory modules that for example, have an Expo or an XMP profile. So also, if you have uh, XMP memory modules, our AMD motherboards also have a XMP. So you can still enable that. Um, so definitely always enable either uh, Expo or uh, XMP on your motherboard to make sure it runs at the, the, the rated frequency and timings for your memory modules. Because, for example, by default, it would run at 4,800 uh, megahertz, while in this case, there are 6,000. And also, they run at way tighter timings now. This is 6000 CL30, for example. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right, uh, Michiel. I mean. And I think ma many people forget this, and they may have very good memory modules, and they're not utilizing them. And that's a pity, of course. Yeah, it's basically when you um, forget you have a sport mode on your car, right? And when you're you know, trying to pull all the performance from it, and you forget turning that on, it's, it's just a shame. So um, yeah, the Expo setting and, and smart access memory is absolutely um, you know, 
key to unlock more FPS and performance from your system. It's not even just about gaming, it's just about the overall system performance, especially with Expo, obviously, stability-wise as well, right? So uh, memory has been optimized for, um, you know, perfect stability, but also uh, unlocking the best of the best performance from your system. And we already touched on it a little bit, FSR. Maybe you can talk us a little bit yeah. through that. Yeah, obviously it's an exciting uh, couple of weeks for us uh, with FSR 3 announcing that uh, upcoming technology in uh, multiple games uh, coming out this month uh, and more games to be added soon as well. Uh, in over 300 games is the, is the, the uh, counter today, FSR 1, FSR 2, 2.2 and so on. Uh, FSR is also part of Starfield, uh, which is great. That gives you that you know performance optimization but also uh, smooth playable. Uh, gaming experience, even on, let's say, uh, mid-range cards, for example, it's uh, just a great way to unlock more FPS using clever technologies built into AMD Radeon um, and Radeon Adrenaline software. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, we're very excited for FSR 3. Obviously, um, FSR 3 is going to bring uh, fluid motion frames, uh, AMD fluid motion frames, which will basically uh, double the frame rates in certain titles that support it, um, exclusive to Radeon 7000 series cards. Um, and so, uh, FSR3, uh, obviously being open source, um, every vendor can use it, every um, game developer uh, can implement it in their games, and this is also what we found working closely with Bethesda on Starfield, for example, um, how great FSR works on Starfield and helps you uh, enable more FPS, basically, with this overall quite demanding title with obviously stunning graphics, especially when you go explore outer space. Um, you'll, you'll want to have something like FSR to help you, um, you know, just to play 60 FPS or something like that, because that's obviously where you want to be at as a minimum to, uh, to fully enjoy that um, great game that Starfield is. Yeah, so basically what it does, like you're rendering a lower resolution and are upscaling it in a clever way so you still get good image fidelity, but of course yeah. it's, it's not as taxing on your graphics card. So like you already mentioned, if you're using maybe a lower end or a mid-range card and you may want to play at 1440p, which can be quite demanding in certain titles, then FSR can be a very nice option to still get like a very nice frame rate for it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, with uh, RDNA 3 architecture with, um, um, you know, updated AI accelerators, ray tracing accelerators, you not only with FSR, but also with those, um, you know, upgraded accelerators, you can also enjoy the latest and greatest graphics visuals, uh, but also in the future of AI, uh, we're just starting with AI, right? So it's very interesting to see where we can move this forward with, in terms of graphics technologies into game development and, um, you know, with the Radeon 7000 series being more future-proof in that sense, uh, enabling you uh, for future releases of titles with FSR 3, but also um, very interesting to see what AI will bring in that sense as well. And for FSR 3, you also have quite some impressive partners on your list, I see. Yeah, absolutely. So we're ever expanding our uh, partnerships with uh, game developers, studios, uh, as you can see on, you know, from CG Pro Project Red on Cyberpunk or the Witcher series uh, to Unreal Engine, um, you know, opening up a lot of games to support AMD FSR uh, and basically bringing more FPS to you on your favorite titles, whether it's uh, existing titles or upcoming titles using, for example, the Unreal Engine. Um. Hector Roldan says in YouTube chat, thank you AMD for open sourcing things. Yeah, I think that's a very nice thing because if a game has FSR, you can almost always enable it, whether you're using an AMD card or not. Um, so it's definitely a very, very interesting technology that a lot of people can, can take advantage of. Yeah, and that's, that's also the fact, you know, for developers to uh, use FSR uh, in their games, not only optimized for AMD, AMD's latest graphics cards, but also uh, other branded graphics cards out there. Um, it even works in consoles, right, the latest generation Xbox, for example. Um, so it gives them more freedom and I would say more focus on potentially upgrading their game for uh, the majority of gamers out there using an open source technology and not locking it into a certain series of cards or whatever, uh, something like that. So um, yeah, we're very excited for, uh, for FSR and what the future will bring for FSR. And you guys have another cool technology that you can maybe touch upon. Oh yeah, Hyper, Hyper RX. RX. Yeah, Hyper what is RX. this? Finally, um, you know, during our Gamescom announcement, um, Frank Azor also talked about Hyper RX. Um, he said, you know, um, when you, let's say, enjoy 
the newest AAA games uh, when you use technologies like FSR, for example, to just get a little bit more frames. Um, and when you're struggling just to get to 60, 60 ish, um, using AFMF, for example, fluid motion frames, um, you may take a small uh, latency hit. And this is where we have AMD HyperRx, not just when you, when you use AMF, AFMF, for example, but um, it will definitely help you significantly reduce the latency that you'll see uh, when playing games, and especially when you're using upscaling technology. So um, HyperRx basically captures multiple unique AMD Radeon features like anti-lag, uh, and now new uh, with the Radeon 7000 series, um, anti-lag plus as well as being supported, um, but also super resolution and Radeon boost. Uh, and basically put that into a simple toggle for everybody to use to turn on HyperRx and reduce their latency uh, 2x, sometimes even 3x. Depending can you maybe on show us where it is? Because you have a system in front of you. Maybe we can have a look in the, in the software. Um, I think, let me see if it's enabled or not. Um, I think it's slated for a release. Maybe we still in need to update the driver. Days, I see there yeah. is an update in the top right, and I see in the chat, Skeets is actually saying, I just got it today, HyperRx and the newest driver. Ah, so, so we yeah, may have to update the drivers. First. Yeah, <laughs> because we're still on an older driver, right? So yeah, it's not part of this driver yet. But um, yeah, you can simply enable it. I think you showed on the slide, right? Uh, yeah. With a simple toggle, uh, basically enabling everything that helps you reduce. So Skeets, let lag. us know in chat, is that the, this, the driver that you got? Do you have this toggle now? <laughs> No, it's not in this driver. It's no, exactly no, no, the one that Skeets noticed. has. Skeets in chat says, I just got it today in the newest driver. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah. we just noticed that the new yeah. driver came out, right? And that's you know um, how quickly our team moves, um, our software team to optimize for new games, but also implement those features, uh, make sure that there's day zero drivers ready uh, for games uh, with the focus of Starfield, for example, but also other titles. And there's obviously in the back half of the year some very interesting other titles also coming out, which we um, obviously do our best to have day zero drivers ready and new features included and supported as well. So if you have a recent AMD card, update your drivers now and <laughs> then you should have this feature. Yeah. And what about streaming? Streaming, AV1, encoding and decoding, yeah. So, you know, so this is quite a big thing recently, right, AV1? Absolutely. So it allows you for lower bit rates but still keep the same quality, right? Or so even basically more, more efficient. More efficient, so you have. Um, it's also for your viewers, right? That see the better quality that you're streaming at, uh, while taxing the graphics cards and the rest of your system less with AV1 support. So, um, with Radeon 7000 series, you get full AV1 encoding and decoding support. Um, if you're streaming on the side, if you're recording videos to upload later, for example, um, but still want that high frame rate, then AV1 is definitely going to help you there. Yeah. So definitely. Interesting development, not only for live streaming, because those platforms, of course, most still have to, to adjust to this as well. So it's not that all platforms already support AV1, but also just videos you want to store on your hard drive. Maybe you have holiday videos. If you um, use AV1 encoding, you can still get very high quality, but make the file size a lot smaller as well, because yeah. it is so much more efficient. So there are, there, I think there are multiple benefits to, to AV1 going forward. And this is something you will see more and more. Um, keep in mind also that, on the, for example, if you're streaming in AV1, the receiving device should also support AV, uh, AV1 because that will do the uh, decoding on the other side. Um, so it depends where you want to watch it. But nowadays, more and more devices are also supporting AV1. So for example, smartphones, but also like media players, I believe. For example, uh, if you're familiar with Google Chromecast, I know their 4K version is a little bit older. That one doesn't have AV1 yet, but strange enough, the HD version, that because it's a little bit newer and has a newer chip, that one natively supports um, the AV1 um, decoding as well. Yeah, it's basically the host and client story, right? Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So if, if someone is streaming using, uh, for example, one of these newer AMD cards that support AV1 encoding, and if the receiving device uh, can do the decoding as well, then uh, you can take advantage of this. Yeah. All right. Well, we talked about gaming, FPS enhancements, uh, latency reduction, streaming, capturing, recording, and so on. I guess, chat, are there any more questions before we um, sign off for today? Yes. Now Martijn is still here. So if you have, 
any specific AMD questions or any suggestions? What do you want AMD to release next? Oh, somebody, Skeets Sayer says, can't wait to do a stream later. Uh huh. Snapshot, okay. Yeah, Honaton is saying, Adrenaline is now showing version 23.8.2. Yeah, there's just a new version released, so yeah. he's right. I think that's maybe also the version that we are currently running. No, maybe. we're running 23.8.2 still. Ah, okay. That's the one we tested, yeah. and uh, that's the one we went for. For um, for the Starfield um, Day Zero support, obviously. Yeah, Jonathan also says if I go to the Radeon website, I see 23.9.1. So that one, I think, should indeed support it. Yeah, go check out the release notes. Yeah. I think there's some pretty good optimizations in there, so uh, be sure to read that. But um, you know, there's a reason, obviously, when new drivers come out, is either new games are supported, there are some major improvements that that have been made to, let's say, a feature or unlocking new levels of performance, some free performance actually sometimes. Um, yeah, so go uh, go ahead and check that out on AMD.com and um, let us know how it goes. Then uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about next week because then this PC will return in full glory. Of course, it's still working, so I, still I'm working. not going to touch it again. Yeah, don't don't touch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will be back uh, next week with some more Starfield. So of course we do need this nice Starfield themed PC with that. Uh, we will do some more Starfield gameplay, so if you're interested in this game, you want to know what it's all about. Now we've only focused a little bit on uh, what kind of performance can you expect, uh, but then we will go deeper into the game itself. Um, we will uh, play this on our latest MSI monitor, so also stay tuned for that one. Interesting. Um, then, Martijn, I'm going to thank you for uh, being here today. Thank and you. For, for all the nice building and eventually got it, getting it to work. <laughs> it's always a challenge, yeah. but I'm happy to help. Uh, no problem. And Thanks uh, for having me. Already looking forward to our next stream together. Me to too. chat, everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining today. Um, maybe we can do one more winner before we close it off. Oh, absolutely. Let's do that. For a last Steam wallet code. I think, can we give away codes as well to a random people in chat or not? Is that possible? No. Oh, because we sorry. do need the contact details. Uh. Let me see. I did press draw, but I don't see the winner. Let's try uh, again. Maybe you should draw more. Just give them away. You get a code. There we go. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a difficult one. The honor is all yours, Martijn. Uh, Ramarex 77 Congratulations, you also won a Steam Wallet code. So to all winners, congrats. Keep an eye on your mailbox. We will email the code to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem it. Now we're going to sign off. So thank you so much for joining today. And uh, hope to see you again next week with some more Starfield, with some more of this PC, um, but then also more of the game. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Bye, guys.